Tough Break. It's basically like the sequel to Gunmetal, but this time, it's personal. This update has given us a ton of new content, including the prerequisites needed for this upcoming Smithsmith loot. Uh, we've got new skins, including wrenches and knives this time, new contracts, all of which are a lot more weapon specific, which is really cool. Uh, three new hilarious, really well-made taunts, and four new maps, all of which are amazing. I love new maps so much, but this update is called Tough Break for a reason. This update shipped with a ton of gameplay changes and class balances, which were a huge part of the gunmetal update, but this time around, some of the changes are pretty negative when it comes to a few classes such as Pyro, Demo Knight, and oh my god, they nerfed the Engineer? Uh, I mean, uh, they only changed like four things, but I I'm Uncle Dane the NG Main, and w we're gonna talk about this, so let's get to it. Spencer going up. Yes, that'll do. Tough Break certainly gave a few well-known parts of TF2 a tough break indeed. Specifically, the Pyro seems to have gotten a lot of the more controversial of the changes, some of which are, in my opinion, justified, uh, some of which are just really confusing to me, and some that are just like, 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 why though? Like, eh. I mean, is that really necessary? Pyro is literally my least played class, so I have no real grounds to rant about those changes, but the nerfs that we're gonna be talking about today are the Engineer nerfs. Yes, the Engineer got the shaft in a few places, but honestly, I don't think it's nearly as bad as you might assume, because on paper, a lot of these changes sound unwarranted and seem like they make the Engineer's life that much harder, but trust me, these stat reductions weren't implemented just because Gaben's favorite class is the Spy. My favorite class is the Spy. Thanks, and have fun. The Engineer is it's a tricky class to balance a game around so here's a breakdown on each of the changes that were added in the tough break update after removing a sapper from a sentry there is now a 0.5 second delay before the sentry is active again what this means is after a sapper is removed for half a second the sentry gun will be disabled and will not be able to track or fire at enemies this is the one that I've heard a lot of the complaining about, given this is less of an engineer nerf and more of a spy's sapper buff, but even then, it's not really as beneficial to the spy as it is encouraging engineers to just get better at combating spies, and here's why. So when a spy saps a sentry, an engineer's first response is going to be to try and remove the sapper, and then ideally attempt to deal with the spy, before if the spy undisguised at any time during this interaction, he had to keep that sapper on the gun in order to not get blown to smithereens. Now, a spy has slightly more time to take a couple pot shots at the engineer while the sentry can't fire at him. What this means is now engineers will have to be a lot more diligent about dealing with the spy instead of just constantly removing the sapper over and over and over and over and over while the spy is forced to stay disguised and therefore unable to use his revolver. In reality, this change is very small. Uh, 0.5 seconds isn't a horribly long time, but it is just enough time to allow a spy more reaction time when he realizes his sapper has been disguised destroyed. I personally believe this change was made for one main reason, and that is that turtling engineers are just the worst kind of engineer. All they do is set up their sentry gun in a quarter or a tight space where it's harder for a spy to get behind them and constantly whack their gun, hoping that they'll get a few kills before an uber demo man shows up. Not only is this not a very fun way to play engineer, it's not fun for spies to combat because they're forced to spam their sapper without stabbing the engineer first. So if a spy attempts to shoot an engineer, they risk getting killed by the sentry when it becomes unsapped. So the only thing to really do is to keep clicking on the gun over and over and over and over. And because all the engineer does is remove the sapper over and over and over, this can go on for like 10 or 15 seconds. And in that time, someone else will probably come over and just kill the spy, achieving nothing in the end. Uh, these interactions are really dumb and only happen at lower skill levels because the game doesn't punish engineers for doing this. Well now, it's slightly easier for spies to just shoot the engineer while he's removing the sapper because there is slightly less risk in undisguising around a sapped gun. They have more time to reapply the sapper after it's been removed, so now engineers have to get up out of their little corner if they want to stop what is now a more reliable sap and shoot tactic from happening. If you're already a decent engineer player and actively guard your gun from outside of a corner, this change probably won't affect you very much. I personally can barely even see a difference, and even in the moments where I did notice it, it was very likely that my sentry gun was going to die anyway, so even though this is technically a nerf, it's more of a balanced decision to make the spy versus engineer encounters a lot more tactical and forces turtling engineers to stop relying on just their sentry gun to do everything for them, which is a good thing. So, 
On to the next change. Sentries brought into a respawn room no longer detonate outside of Man vs. Machine. And this change is not a nerf nor a buff, this is just something that should have been changed a long time ago. I I'm not even completely sure why that mechanic even existed in the first place, I mean, it only affected sentry guns, you could always bring your teleporters and dispensers into spawn rooms, so why not sentry guns? The only real reason I could see it being a thing before is maybe they thought that engineers would try and save their guns by picking them up and running into spawn with them, but in reality, it simply didn't do anything except frustrate frustrate engineers who built their teleporters on the spawn room divider line and attempted to bring the gun through it. So, this change is cool, it, it makes moving your sentry gun to the next point on certain maps a thing, which is good because too many engineers seem to refuse to retreat their guns, so maybe this change will help with squashing that trend. On the Jag, added damage penalty against buildings, it now takes three hits to destroy a sapper. So this change is something that I kind of saw coming because, uh, let's face it, the, the Jag was the wrench to use for most situations. It had a really useful upside, and its downsides just weren't enough to keep people from using it for almost every situation. Now, using the Jag not only makes your buildings slightly weaker against consistent damage, it now makes your buildings weaker against spies as well. So now the Jag has earned itself a dedicated purpose, instead of just a general all-around good wrench, which is a good thing. I don't think there should be any set meta when it comes to weapons. I think that in order to keep this game interesting, every weapon should be used in and out of specific situations, and now the Jag's purpose is speed over longevity. But in my opinion, the Jag still remains the best wrench to use for offense, since you should be more or less focused on pushing the cart and protecting areas for a short period of time quickly. The Jag's weakness to spies is lessened on offense because of your sentry gun's disposable nature. Uh, most of the time, you'll have access to infinite metal via payload cart anyway, and after a point is capped, you'll need to reset your building placements quickly, so the Jag isn't punished for its lack of heals when you play with it in this way. The Jag is also perfect for setting up a quick sentry gun or teleporter when you're close to a spawn door, uh, mainly during pre-round setup time. Personally, ever since Tough Break came out, I've been using the Jag to build everything up at spawn, and once I have everything at level 3, I just switch to the stock wrench for the impending battle. That way, I get to use the speed of the Jag for setting up, and the healing power, extra damage, and sapper slaying power of the stock wrench for when the gates open. So basically, the Jag isn't the wrench to use for every and all situation when building leveled sentries anymore. I know that for me, you guys are definitely going to be seeing the return of my old Australian wrench. Uh, come here, baby. I, I've missed you. Don't worry about those wrench skins. I'll, I'll never give you up again. I promise. Oh, oh whoa, whoa. Okay, well, that, that looks pretty cool. Whoa. But really, the Jag is still an amazing wrench, and it's a great tool in the offensive engineer's arsenal. Just don't be afraid to switch between the wrenches when the situation calls for it. And on to the last nerf for the engineer, the Rescue Ranger. Healing per bolt reduced from 75 to 60. I must admit, when I first read this change, I, w I was kind of sad. I I've always said that the Rescue Ranger is my favorite weapon in the game because of the amazing things it does for the engineer and how it adds a huge amount to the skill ceiling for him. The most useful thing that the Rescue Ranger does is give you the ability to heal your gun from a distance, which is insanely useful considering that a sentry gun's major weaknesses are explosives which deal devastating splash damage. So the Rescue Ranger allows the Engineer to stand out of the splash damage radius and keep him alive as well as the gun. So according to this change, it's now less viable to tank your gun from afar just using the Rescue Ranger bolts, but when I hopped into the game for the first time after seeing the changes, I didn't really see a big difference. I mean, it's only 15 less health per bolt and 60 less health per clip, which means it takes one extra bolt to make up for this change, which equates to less than one extra second. So it's it, it's very hard to notice, and it hasn't changed my personal playstyle in the slightest. If anything, because the Jag is less viable for tanking a gun, the amount of healing lost from the Rescue Ranger is now technically recovered when I use wrenches that aren't the Jag. So really, the heal rate remains pretty unchanged for me, especially since the weapon switch rate has increased for all classes. So comboing your wrench and your Rescue Ranger bolts for healing just became that much easier. Boy, weapon combos are fun, right Pyros? Oh. Oh no. Right, well, that's all they changed about the engineer. I hope that you enjoyed watching my video, and don't forget to smash that motherfu- Oh wait, we almost forgot the most important change. They buffed the panic attack. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. The panic attack. It's a thing now.
just so glad I didn't delete this thing. <laughs>